All right, so let me give you some problems where you have to round to the nearest thousand, just so that we are kind of understanding what we're doing here. We all know that if I gave you something nice, like the square root of 64, the answer would just be what? Three. The answer would just be 8. Now, since the instructions here say round to the nearest thousandth, how would you round this to the nearest thousandth? How many decimal places is this thousandths? That's well, a good thing. That's not going to be on the test, except that it is. Where's your decimal here? Right behind the eight. How many decimal places does it take, does it take to get to the thousandths? Three. So what numbers come after the eight? These are zero. So how many zeros do I need here to run to the nearest thousandth? I just need three of those, right? Now, we know that if I'm on my calculator here and I type in 8.000, the calculator just knows that's 8. It doesn't need to hold on to the zeros because they're understood to be there, right? If you pay very close attention, you see that you've got a decimal that's here by default. Even if I clear it out, the decimal point is still going to be there, so you can always pay attention to where that is. Now, what if I ask you for the square root of something like 3. Do you know the square root of 3? You don't? Come on, Tim, why not? Oh, the cool kids know it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm a cool kid then because I know it. So if I want to do the square root of 3, I have to press 3 and then the square root. It should be about 1.732. Right? You see, here's your decimal here, so we got to go to the thousandths. Seven, three, here's the two, and to the right of that is a zero, so I'm not going to round up. It's going to stay as a two. So, 1.732. Oh, I've got a great idea for you. What if I wanted you to round this guy to the nearest thousandth? What do you think that means? What does all of this mean right here? Multiplication. It means multiplication. This 7 is being multiplied times the square root of 5. Now, how do you type this into your calculator so you can get the answer? Can I type 7 times 5 and then press square root? No. no. Just five. If I do 7 times 5 and then hit the square root, it's probably going to do the square root of 35. That's not what I have here. Do the square root of 5 first. So uh, I'm going to probably clear this every time I do a problem just because I don't trust this guy because sometimes I get a little lazy. So if I press 5 and the square root, I get this number here. Now, please understand this number should make sense to you. The square root of 5 should be more than the square root of 4, right? Now, why am I thinking about the square root of 4? I get a nice clean number because the square root of 4 is what? Just two. 2. What's the next number you'd want to put inside of the square root symbol? Maybe 9? Right? Because what's the square root of 9? 3. So I know the square root of 5 should be between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. So when I see 2.236, that sounds appropriate to me, right? So here's this number, but I need to multiply this times 7, so times. 7, and I've got this number. Rounded to the nearest thousandth is what? 10ths, hundredths, thousandths. Do I round up or keep it the same? Keep it the same. Keep it the same. Keep it the same. So 652. Now, Karen, even on your, on your graphing calculator, you could type it in just the way you see it. 7, then do the square root of 5, and you should get the same decimal that we get here. I mean, I would assume it would be even more accurate and prettier than what I'm getting here, but you never know. What if our, oh, this is a good one. How about the square root of 7 minus the square root of 13? Did you get the same answer we got? Yeah. Yay! How would you do this? Do the square root of 
So, okay, I need to do the square root of 7, so that's going to be, see, again, I just don't trust this. So, press 7 and the square root of 7, so I get, well, you know what, since I'm going to have to round to thousandths, I might want to, while I'm doing my work, carry a few more, like one or two extra decimal points here, just to be on the safe side. So when I'm doing this, we've got 2.645, I'm going to go 75 here just to be on the safe side. And then I need to do, whoops, the square root of 13, so that's 3.605, okay. So minus 3.60, and I've got these three fives. So now when I go and do the math, it should be fairly easy just to type this stuff in. Now I can show you another way of doing this, but I'm just going to do it this way right now. So 2.64575 minus 3.60555. So what's my answer? Round to the nearest thousandth. So zero point. So here's my thousandth spot. So the eight tells me I need to round up, so that make this guy become a zero. But you have to kind of add that back. So nine five nine becomes nine six zero. Do you all agree? See, I don't, though. I don't agree with my answer. Why do I not agree with my own answer? I got a negative. My answer should be negative, right? See this minus that, and you look here on the calculator display. It even says minus right here. What were you guys thinking? Mm -mm -mm. So that would be a very fun problem to have on, on the test, right? Now, here's where we could run into problems, potentially. A again, I don't play around with this enough on this kind of calculator to know if I'm going to mess up. But if I were to do 7 square root minus 13 and the square root, okay, I guess I just have to hit enter or equals. And there's my answer. So what I did here first, I did 7 square root, I get my answer minus, you now when I type in the 13, it's not actually subtracting the 13, and when I press the square root, that's not even subtracting the square root yet until I hit equals or press another operator. So if I take this answer around to the nearest thousandth, you see that I would still need to round this guy up, and it's still going to be 0 0.960. What do you guys think? Yes? No? Now, where do we use square roots? Where do they come in handy for us? Now, I'm reminded of a question that you had on a test not too long ago. If I have a square, if you were given a square that has an area of 81 square inches, what is the length of one of the sides? How would you figure that out? How did we figure it out? What's the area for a square? Area for a square is the side length squared, right? Because you have these guys being the same length, so side times side. Yes? But if I say my area is 81, Then when you had this on the test, your thought was to, okay, what squared equals 81? Unfortunately, you guys didn't do that. Some of you did. Others tried to divide by 2, but that wouldn't work out. It gave you an answer that didn't get you back to that same area. So what would you square to get 81? You know that's 9, right? Just real world has told you that S should equal 9. So in this case, it would be 9 inches, and that makes sense, right? But what if that's not what it is, though? What if your square
has an area of 84 square inches. And I want to know what is the length of one of the sides. See, I could go from here and then I could say, okay, what is the perimeter rounded to the nearest thousandths? So I could say this, find perimeter to the nearest thousandth inch. In order to find perimeter, what do you have to find first? I already gave you the area. You don't need to find that. Perimeter, remember, is the distance around. It has nothing to do with area. So remember that the area is supposed to be the side length squared, right? But what do you know? The A or the S? You know the area, right? The area is 84. How do you think I'll find out what just S is? What's been the theme of the day? Square root, right? Because you're trying to think what squared equals 84. And think about how we talked about the square root definition in the last video. You're thinking something squared to give you 84, and that's where the square root comes in. So my S is equal to the square root of 84, but this guy is approximately, remember how we used that symbol? Approximately what? Go to your calculators, and I'll go to mine. So 84, and I press the square, so I get this. So my area is, excuse me, my S is about what? This is about 9.165 inches, right? Do you agree with that? Now, here's what I want you to do. Keep this in the calculator. Don't clear this out yet because of the next step. This is just the side length. But what do I want? What did the question ask for? Find the perimeter. Well, what's the perimeter? Isn't there a formula for that? So the perimeter is supposed to be four times the length of a side, right? which for us would be four times. Now, here's the thing. If you are being exact, S is the square root of 84, right? The square root of 84 contains all of the information that this decimal does not contain. This decimal, we rounded at the thousandth, right? But I'm supposed to multiply that times four, right? So what happens when I do that? So here's my square root already, times 4. If you had to round this, this is about 9, times 4 should give you about what? 36. I expect it to be a little bit more than 36 because of me rounding this guy down. And I end up with this number right here. So rounded to the nearest thousandth inch, this is about how many inches. What is it? Here's your thousandth spot right here. Does it stay the same or round up? It's going to round up. So it's going to round up to be one. So make sure you keep your units here. So the perimeter is about 36 and 661 thousandths inches. Now let me show you a problem that we're going to run into here if you're not paying attention to your decimals and how accurate you need to be. If I took the first guy, which was 9.165, and I multiplied this guy times 4, is that the same thing as this answer? No, because look what happened. 
when I had the square root of 84 and I rounded to the nearest thousandth right here, I was missing all that information right here. And since I was multiplying times 4, that actually was enough that when I rounded, it gave me this extra thousandth inch. So to be very careful how you type things into your calculator, making sure about how we're rounding. If I'd gone out to point 16515 here instead of just this. So 9.16515. So it's more information. When I round this guy, then I'm going to round to what the real guy actually is. So more information can help you rounding at the very end. If you keep rounding a lot of different spots along the way, it's not going to work out well for you. There should really only be one time that you round, if you can help it, and that's for your final answer. Only round once. Up here, I rounded for each of these numbers, but I had enough extra information here that I felt very reasonable about what I was going to have here. Okay. But if you have something like a graphing calculator, that will let you keep all of the information in the calculator. <coughs> And you just have to hit enter one time, and you get your answer, and you can round that. Only round once if you can help it.